Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy Soren here today with another video. We're back again with more requests. Uh, today someone had requested that I, I do a little breakdown of my don't leave uh, PMV slash AMV. Um, instead of doing what I normally did for my breakdowns, I thought I'd be a little bit more interactive with it and kind of go over uh, the process of how I edited it. And uh, basically what I did, the, the concept I did with this was a twin edit. So it was essentially the same thing but with different clips. I know it sounds really lazy, but I thought it turned out well and it was, it was fun to make. There's a little, you know, a little shower thought I had, so I thought I'd give it a try. So basically, uh, we'll just go over this. First off, uh, excuse me on my messy workspace. If I'm not doing a project file, I just kind of toss shit wherever. I don't really organize anything. But uh, you guys see that here. So we'll go off uh, pre-comp by pre-comp because I, I do things in, in layers, like I said, so it's easy for me to, uh, to go through and switch clips if I need to to accommodate for different audiences. But nonetheless, uh, we start with our audio here. Uh, pretty simple stuff, it's just the song. Placed out over 20 some seconds. I have a couple uh, uh, keyframes here for bass and treble. Just when you use the bass and treble effect, which is built in After Effects, and you take the treble out, it leaves it with that really muffled bass sound. That's, that's really nice. So uh, that's what I did for that, and then audio levels just fade in, fade out. Nothing too really spectacular, you guys all know how to do that. And then after that, I went and created this composition that I called main for some reason, because I thought I was going to be working in here more. But uh, all this is, is I basically created that starting, uh, I guess that starting scene, the title sequence, where it comes in with all these particles and things like that. So uh, a couple people had asked me if this was particular. It's not. This is actually using Trap Code Form, which is uh, from a pre uh, from a plugin called Trap Code. Uh, what I did for this, I'm not gonna make a tutorial on this because I took directly from another tutorial, and it would just be kind of pointless for me to remake that. But I will drop the video I used to make this in the description. Uh, basically, what it was was turning an image into these little particle dots using Trap Code Form. So uh, really simple. Uh, it only it, this only takes about like five to ten minutes to make each little aspect, and then uh, I use some 3D camera moves to pull in and then back uh, to pull out and then back into it. And I basically made this its own separate composition here, simply because uh, I didn't want it to get too messy using uh, the 3D camera, and also I thought it'd be a little bit easier on my computer. So as you can see here, this is the anime. Uh, the anime twin looks kind of odd right here, but uh, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. But after that, let's see here. I think I went into a um, I went into my syncing composition. So one, what I do, I do all my syncing in uh, a separate composition. So basically, this is it. It's the whole thing. So this empty space here is where that main composition will come in. But uh, this is just clips, no effects, just uh, this is where I would do any twist or time remapping if I chose to do that as well. But uh, essentially it's just a whole bunch of clips that are changing to the beat, you know, uh, just all the way through. And like I said, all I would have to do if I wanted to change it to a different show, uh, a different, uh, you know, different clips, or anything like that, is just kind of put them in here, uh, make sure they all line up correctly, and that's it, it'd be done. So that's that's something that's really good, really easy. Uh, quite lazy, honestly, but you know it's it's a it's a different it's a different way of thinking about things. If you want to say it like that. All right. So after there, I went into my next composition, uh, which is still named audio for some reason. I don't know why, but this is why I took everything and started to put things together and start to add uh, transitions and effects. So as you can see, this is that first composition I used, and then uh, if we zoom out here this up a little bit you can see uh, there's the whole starting point and then now we're getting into uh, the actual edit so if I click on this there are some uh, effects for transitions and things like that this is before I started doing transitions on their completely own composition I was doing a more clip by clip basis I guess but some of these is necessary because uh, while well, here you see it's all just pumps and things like that, like here I had uh, some other effects come in. Like here's the overlay and there's a shine. Uh, there's like a displacement map that's like has an additive layer on it and all that other stuff. 
so that's why there's so many like uh, layers on top of each other things like that here we have a, a mask coming from the side it, it does a little flip around uh, it's not too complicated there's just a lot to manage so like right here I took a uh, one clip uh, froze it so it did you know right click time remap and freeze frame then I had it come in like here and then spin around nice little snappy transition and then from here I think this is the composition where I added a lot of my effects see this is all of my uh, different transitions and stuff it's where I was adding most of my effects like as you can see here as well there's uh, nothing in the background I think I I think I put something in the background here. We'll have to check. Don't worry. I haven't looked at this project file in months. Or, I don't know, since whenever I uploaded it. And as you can see here, it's just more effects. More and more effects. Uh, I know in these, I used a lot of Sapphire. Sapphire is probably, um, with the exception of like RSMB and Magic Belt Looks, Sapphire is probably the number one effects plugin that I would recommend. Trap Code is really good, but it's harder to learn. And a Trap Code is uh, kind of rough on your computer as well. But Sapphire is easier on your computer and has a lot of stuff that's really easy to use. Like, uh, I don't think I've ever actually looked up a tutorial to use anything from Sapphire. I just kind of mess with the values and stuff and figure it out on my own. But if you look at our effects here, one thing I started using in this one was the color emboss, or just emboss effects in general. So if you look right here, how it's kind of shifted and things like that, that's what that's doing. Uh, so, in case you're wondering what that is, this is a lot of different effects. I just kind of when I was making this, I got kind of strapped for ideas. I was like, I'm just gonna toss a whole bunch of things on here because I can't really do things that are clip specific, like uh, with like masking characters out. Because like I said, I was just replacing clips to uh, that way I could make two different versions. So I just started tossing things on there, and uh, it looked alright. And this sparkle color thing is uh, what's making the sparkles. That's not part of the clip, but I thought that was pretty cool. Um, well, I don't even know what this is. Oh, okay. So this is uh just a whole bunch of different wipes. So like one had a uh, turban displays on it. Uh, Jesus, <laughs> I really haven't looked at these in a while. A lot of them just have, uh, like I said, a lot of different effects and filters. I was just tossing things on it randomly and just hoping it looked good. And uh, I think it looked decent, so, you know, don't give me too much hate. Uh, Mosaic is a really cheesy one to use, but it looks nice. It gives it that like, pixelated effect, in case you're wondering. Uh, keep going on. Turbulent displays, displacement map, these are all things that you've seen before. Uh, the little color effect is done by using... Uh, Sapphire clouds, there's psycho, like psycho bob, and things like that. Uh, this is what people used to make those like weird colors and make their stuff just look really colorful for no reason. But uh, I thought it'd be pretty generic and use it. But yeah, that's what that looks like. In case you're wondering what effect that is, that's another thing where I don't know if I want to make a tutorial for it because I just toss it on there and put the the blending mode to color and that was it. I didn't do anything else. <laughs> so uh, if you guys want a 15 second tutorial, there it is. This one, how did I do this one? I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um, let's see here. That I did in sync. Hold on. Did I? I don't know. No, sorry about that. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> um, I think I did this using an adjustment layer. Yep, here it is. There we go. I'm going to move these down a little bit so you guys can see where they're supposed to be. So, to get that effect of where it uh, kind of flows in from the top and zooms in, I just used adjustment layers that had mass on them. Or they didn't have mass, they were just smaller. So, they weren't the size of the composition. They were, uh, let's see, how big were they? Probably just like half, half size. Or they're scaled down. Yeah, scaled down to 25%. And I uh, just moved their position. And I had them scaling using the transform. So that was pretty cool. I'd honestly forgotten how I did that up until just now. So don't worry, guys. Sometimes I even look back at stuff I make to, to see what I've done. And, uh, and then we got more just basic transitions here. Using uh, different masks and stuff. You can find these in uh, some of my older tutorials. And then uh, I do this little thing where I, I do the what do you call it, the pan crop and a rotation transition at the same time but I use no layers to change where the anchor points are so these are the two that are doing the, the scale and transform 
but their anchor points are in the corner so it makes it look it's got this offset and it's kind of like flipping around odd uh, it's something really cool that uh, I don't know if I, I definitely didn't come up with it but I've probably seen it before but I don't know who I got it from but it's something I like to do I use it quite a bit in my edits as well and then uh, I'm using more sapphire let's see this warp vortex wave warp uh, like I said, I was just kind of tossing things out there. This is under Sapphire Transitions, I think. Sapphire comes with like over 100 effects and uh, things you can toss on your stuff. So I would honestly just mess around with it. That way you're not looking exactly the same as people. But there's, there's just uh, some distortion things make the transitions look clean. Um, let's see, hopefully my computer isn't shitting itself. Okay, now we're good. And then just more basic stuff. So let's go ahead and hop into the next one. I spent a lot of time explaining that composition because that's why I spent most of my time editing. Uh, so now if we look here, just back up a little bit. What do we have going on in here? See a very small amount of pre comps. So like this. Oh, so this is where I was adding um, the earthquake effect, the or the earthquake with quotes around it. Cause that's just what I named it. It's one of my presets. You can find it in my 1K pack. But uh, if you just type in earthquake after you put it in it's SRN underscore earthquake, and uh, all it does is make the position shake rapidly along with a directional blur. And then uh, it looks like I was also adding levels here to give it a little flash. But uh, that's what was going on with that. What's this? Yeah, see more more shaking and stuff like that. Uh, I had a turbulent displace. This is really just laying on more effects that. If I had put in the composition before, so if I had taken all these effects and tried to put them in here, they either would have conflicted with some of the transitions because some of the shakes also use the position keyframes. And uh, I can't have too much going on or else it won't look how you think it will. And also if I keep adding effects onto it, uh, my computer won't be able to handle it. You, know, you might have a better one or a worse one, but that's one thing to know if your computer isn't too hot. Uh, what uh, I would recommend doing is if you need to do a lot of effects to use multiple compositions, uh, for me, my computer is able to handle that a lot better, and that's what I think most people will be able to do as well. And then, uh, like I said, just more effects. Uh, the the warp effect does not work with uh, a motion tile. They they somehow conflict, and I don't know how to fix the error, so I use the warp in motion tile in separate compositions, and that is how I do a workaround. But I also have more uh, like shaking and stuff in this one as well. And this is just my end title screen. Nothing, uh, nothing new. Just text. If you want to see how I made the text, it's kind of animated with the colors. Oh, I think it's in here. No, I have no idea where it is. Here it is. I took uh, normal text and a solid that had clouds color smooth. So it's just like colorful clouds from the Sapphire preset or the Sapphire plugins again. And uh, I took my text. Uh, which is all white, and I just set the track mat of the clouds to a luma mat, so it takes place of all the white of the layer above it. And then when you turn the text layer off, it will have the uh, all the colors showing through, and they they can be animated and stuff, so that's really cool. So that's my little end title, and then we go to this right here is uh, just some more shakes. Like I said, it's always good to make sure that you're your edits are really they have motion in it so you know people don't get bored watching it it doesn't look like there's just like static frames of where it's just the clip playing if you want it to be really kind of high energy and stuff like that so I use sapphire for that I probably got lazy but uh that's also you know someone someone made the sapphire shape plugin so we might as well use it for all their hard work and things like that but at this point, this is probably my last composition where I did any sort of editing in it. And then I think this last one, yep, so, and then this last composition is what I always do. This is where I added the black bars, and then I added Magic Bullet Looks, which is a color correction plugin. If you don't know what it is, I'd recommend getting it. You can find it on the internet, and I also have a couple CC packs for it uh, on my selfie. And then... Uh, I added RSMB, which is real smart motion blur, to uh, the actual clip itself to make things look a little smooth. But other than that, that's it. That's uh, that's all I did for this edit. 
Uh, I liked it a lot. It came out uh, it came out the way I wanted it to be. It's pretty smooth. It wasn't too crazy on the effects, like I said. But yeah, if you guys want me to do any more breakdowns, you know, I enjoy doing these. Or if you have any other suggestions, make sure you leave them down in the comments. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down and let me know why. But anyway, guys, I've been Soren, and I'm out. Thank you.